People keep asking me, is it safe to mix creatine with Ozempic? Here's the shocker. It's not just safe. The real problem is when you don't combine them. That's when your muscle vanishes, your metabolism tanks, and the weight comes roaring back. I'm Dr. Jones DC, and I lead the coaching department at our nationwide GLP-1 telemed clinic. And after helping thousands of patients with muscle building and weight loss optimization strategies, here's why creatine isn't just safe, it's damn right essential. And today I'm answering the seven biggest safety questions about mixing creatine with your GLP-1 meds. Real questions from real patients. And question number four, it's actually quite opposite of what everyone thinks. So question number one, can they actually be mixed? So this question comes from hundreds of patients and online forums, you can just see this thing all the time. Will creatine interfere with myozepic? So let me be absolutely crystal clear. There is zero drug interactions, none, and I can prove it. These medications work on completely different biological systems. Ozempic targets your GLP-1 receptors, that's your gut hormone system, controlling appetite and blood sugar. Creatine works on your phosphocreatine system. That's your muscle energy battery. They literally don't even need in your body. It's like asking if your refrigerator will interfere with your washing machine. Different appliances, different functions, in different systems entirely. I had a patient, Robert, 55 years old, taking blood pressure meds, cholesterol meds, and Ozempic. His pharmacist cleared creatine with all of them. Why? His pharmacist and doctor were A-OK -okay with the combination because in over 1,000 published studies, creatine has zero drug interactions with any medication. But here's what's interesting. While they don't interact, they actually complement each other perfectly. Ozempic helps you lose fat. Creatine, especially combined with resistance training, even light bands or body weight exercises, it has been shown to help you preserve muscle. And in our practice, patients who combine all three see the best results. I've reviewed every drug interaction database, Lexicomp, Micromedex, and facts and comparisons. Ozempic, Monjaro, Wagovi, Zepbound. Doesn't matter which GLP-1 medication you're on, no interaction with creatine. And semaglutide or zepatide, the active ingredients in those four pharmaceutical brands, same thing. In fact, many of the physicians that I coach and interact with also are taking both, just like myself. I'm on creatine and I'll be on it for the rest of my life. That should tell you something about the safety profile. Now, your doctor might not even know this because nutrition supplements aren't emphasized in medical training, but the science is crystal clear that these are safe to combine. Number two, will it sabotage my weight loss? So question two is the big fear. Like I saw the scale go up three pounds after starting creatine. Is it making me gain weight? And you can understand the psychological stress because you're on the meds to begin with. So here's what's actually happening. Creatine pulls water into your muscles, not underneath your skin like bloating, but into the muscle cells themselves. This is called intracellular hydration, intra meaning inside the cell. It's completely different from fat gain or regular water retention. That two to three pound increase, it's your muscles becoming proper properly hydrated and functional. It's like the difference between a raisin and a grape. Same fruit, but one is properly hydrated and functional. I had a patient, Linda, 48 years old, started creatine, scale went up two pounds. She had called us that morning, completely panicked. Am I gaining weight? Is this creatine working against me? I, I remember, and I could hear the frustration in her voice. But her measurements, waist went down, clothes fit better, and she looked more toned because hydrated muscles actually look more firm and healthy not puffy. Here's the key distinction. Fat makes you bigger. Muscle hydration makes you look better at the same size. Big difference. And this is temporary. After two to three weeks, your body adjusts and the scale stabilizes. Meanwhile, the preserved muscle is burning extra calories 24 seven. So think about it like this. Would you rather lose 30 pounds and look deflated or lose 27 pounds and look fit? That's the trade-off that we're talking about. And number three, what about kidney damage? This question is a scary one. My creatinine levels are up. Is creatine damaging my kidneys? This is the most misunderstood aspect of creatine. Creatinine is a waste product that naturally increases when you take creatine. It's expected, it's normal, it's not kidney damage. Think of it like this. If you drive more, you'll have more oil changes. More oil changes doesn't mean your engine is failing. It means you're using your car. The 14 year longitudinal studies are clear. No kidney damage in people with healthy kidneys. We're talking about studies that follow thousands of people for over a decade. However, and this is important, if you have any kidney disease whatsoever or reduced kidney function that you and your doctor have talked about, 
you need to talk to your nephrologist, that's your kidney doctor. This includes diabetes with kidney involvement, chronic high blood pressure affecting your kidneys, or any other abnormal kidney lapse. For everybody else, your kidneys are fine and you don't need to stress about it. But here's the critical part. Tell your doctor that you're taking creatine before blood work. Otherwise, they'll see elevated creatine and might panic unnecessarily. This is what we tell our patients to tell their primary cares. Doc, I'm taking creatine for muscle preservation during my weight loss journey. It will elevate my creatine levels, which are normal and expected. They will appreciate that little bit of heads up, the, the ones that actually give a damn. Question number four, when should I not take it? This question surprises everyone. The answer is rarely, but there are specific situations. First, if you have any kidney disease, we've covered that. Second, if you have any severe GLP-1 nausea and you can't keep anything down, wait until that stabilizes. Not that creatine is gonna exacerbate your creatine, but it may. But here's the backwards part that everybody gets all wrong. People think they should wait till they're ready or until they're starting to work out, and that's completely backwards. Even if you're not working out yet, it's another problem, you should be getting your butt to the gym as quickly as you can. The best time to start is immediately when you begin your GLP-1 meds. Why? Because the patients that I coach who start creatine right away typically maintain more muscle than those who wait, even when they're not working out, even when they're barely working out. Every week matters when you're in a calorie deficit. I had this patient, I <laughs> just think of James, 62 years old, he waited for three months to start his creatine because he wanted to lose some weight first. That's the, the normal thought process. His DEXA scans showed that he had already lost seven pounds of muscle. It took him eight months to rebuild half of it. The only other time to avoid it is if you're having an allergic reaction, which is extremely rare. We're talking less than 0.01% of users ever have this issue. Some people ask about surgery. You can continue to take creatine right up to and after your surgery. It actually helps with recovery. Just inform your surgical team. If you're getting your answers here that you haven't heard anywhere else, hit that subscribe button. We release two videos every single week specifically for GLP-1 users who want the science, not the hype. Plus it helps the channel out big time. So hit that button right now and be sure to turn that bell on. I'm about to share exactly how to start creatine safely week by week, including the tiny mistakes that ruin everything. Okay, question five, the practical one. How do I actually start taking these safely? Here's our week by week implementation protocol that we use in our clinics with our patients every single day. Week number one, start off with three grams every single day. Not five, not 10, just three. Take it with food to minimize any stomach issues. Morning is fine, evening is fine, just be consistent. Week number two, if there's no issues, increase to five grams daily. This is your maintenance dose. You can split it 2.5 grams one morning, two and a half grams in the evening, or take it all at once. It's completely fine. Now, week number three, assess how you feel. More energy, less fatigue during your workouts. This is great. This is a good indicator. The scale went up two pounds. That's normal. Stay at five grams per day. Week number four and beyond, and this is your cruise control option, five grams every single day forever, no cycling needed, no loading phase whatsoever. By the way, a little sneak peek in my next creatine video that I'm gonna release, we're gonna talk about this hyperloading phase and trying to make sense of all that. Okay, now what type of creatine? Start with the simple tried and true creatine monohydrate. It is the most researched, most affordable. If you get any bloating, which is rare, you can switch to creatine HCL. Linda, one of our patients, the ones I mentioned earlier, she had a mild bloating issue with the monohydrate. She switched to HCL, problem solved. Costs about 30% more, but it's worth it for some people. Mix it with your water, your coffee, your smoothies, your yogurt, it doesn't matter. It's tasteless. Some people put it right in their mouth and wash it down. I personally wouldn't do that. I think it's a little bitter, but whatever works for you. And here's what the research actually shows. Creatine works best for muscle preservation when you're doing some form of resistance training. Doesn't have to be heavy weights, resistance bands, body weight squats, even yoga counts. The creatine gives your muscles the energy to respond to that exercise stimulus. Now, completely separate note, if you wanna optimize your GLP-1 weight loss, you need heavy, hypertrophy style resistance training, but we're just stating the fact that anything is always gonna be better than nothing. Now, here's my favorite tip. Put the creatine container next to your Ozempic in the fridge. Every week you inject, you see the creatine visual reminder. Track your progress, take measurements, not just the weights, but your arms, your thigh, your waist. You'll see the difference in muscle maintenance within four to six weeks. But here's what nobody talks about, the side effects that aren't actually from the creatine at all. Okay, question number six is about troubleshooting. What if I get side effects? Okay, let's be real here about what might happen and how to fix it. Issue number one, stomach upset. Very rare, 
but the solution, take with food, reduce down to two grams and build up more slowly. If that doesn't work, then switch to creatine HCL. Number two, feeling bloated. This is different from stomach upset. It's water retention. Make sure you're drinking enough water. Now, counterintuitively, more water will actually reduce the bloating here. Issue number three, headaches. But here's the thing. It's usually just the dehydration. You need about 20% more water when taking creatine. That's roughly two to three extra glasses every day. Issue number four, muscle craps. Again, hydration and electrolytes. Add a pinch of salt to your water, Celtic, pink Himalayan, or use an electrolyte supplement. Number five, the scale frustration. Remember, two to three pounds of water weight is good. It means your muscles are hydrated and functional. Focus on measurements, not weight. Here's what's not a side effect, but people think it is. Increased urination. You're drinking more water, you're gonna pee more. That's normal. I had a patient who thought creatine was making her anxious. Turns out she was taking it with pre-workout that had caffeine in it. Switch to plain creatine, anxiety gone. If you have persistent issues after two weeks, you might be in that one to 2% who don't tolerate it well, that's okay. Stop for a week, retry at lower doses, and if you're still having issues, focus on other muscle preservation strategies. But honestly, most side effects are either dehydration or taking low quality creatine with additives. By the way, if you guys are just a little intrigued with this whole talk about creatine and you're thinking long-term, how can I use creatine? But more importantly, how can I achieve lasting weight loss? Because that's what we're all about here. And we do service all 50 states. I'll leave a link in the description to book a free discovery call with one of my experts and figure out how we can set you up for success long-term. Question number seven is crucial. How do I discuss this with my doctor? Many doctors aren't familiar with creatine beyond the gym supplement. <laughs> it's the gym supplement, it's all the bros take it, but everybody should be taking it. Here's exactly how to have this conversation. Start with, I'm looking at creatine monohydrate to preserve muscle mass during my GLP-1 weight loss journey. The International Society of Sports Nutrition has over a thousand studies showing that it's safe. What are your thoughts, doc? If they express concern and say, I understand creatine will raise creatinine levels on the blood panel, but that's expected and not indicative of kidney damage unless I have pre existing kidney issues. Is there any medical reason I shouldn't take it? If they're supportive but uninformed, would you like me to send you the position paper from the International Society of Sports Nutrition? It's a comprehensive review of the safety data. Key points to mention. You're taking five grams per day. You're not doing a loading phase. You'll increase your water intake and you'll inform them before any blood work. If they're completely against it without medical reason, you might say, hey, I respect your opinion. Can you help me understand your specific concerns so that we can research them? We, because some doctors, you're gonna have to do that legwork for them. Remember, most resistance comes from outdated information or confusion with steroids. Creatine is not a controlled substance, not a steroid, not a hormone. Robert, my 55 year old patient, his doctor initially said no. Robert brought in two research papers, explained the muscle issue with GLP-1s and his doctor said, I had no idea. This makes sense. Go ahead, Rob. The key is approaching it as a partnership, not a confrontation. You're both in the same team. Remember, it's all about you and optimizing your health. Actually, before I share my closing thoughts here, I need to know something from you. What is the biggest safety concern about adding creatine to your regimen that you were concerned about? And, and here's the twist. Also tell me which question number surprised you the most. Drop it in the comments. I personally respond to as many as I possibly can. And I'm gonna be making a second creatine video, a more in-depth research-based 10 of the most popular benefits. So let me know in the comments what you guys want me to cover in that creatine video. Look, I get it. Adding something new when you're already dealing with GLP-1 side effects feels risky, but here's the truth. The risk is not taking it. Every week without creatine is muscle loss, metabolism slowdown, future weight regain. At 30 cents a day with zero drug interactions and 14 years of safety data, this isn't a risky experiment. It's an evidence-based metabolic protection. We've answered the seven biggest safety questions. You know it doesn't interact with your meds. You know water weight is temporary and beneficial. You know how to start safely, troubleshoot your issues, and talk to your doctor. The only question left is, will you protect your muscle starting today? Or lose it and try to rebuild it later? Don't do that. Remember what I said in the beginning, the real problem isn't taking them together, it's not taking them together, and now you know why. By the way, if you guys are looking at long-term strategies, microdosing GLP-1s to maintain your GLP-1 weight loss for the rest of your life, I'm talking lower doses than starter. How does that work? How do you get there? I'll leave a link in the description so that you can book a free discovery call with my experts who can explain big picture 
how that would work for you. They're gonna take some time with you and get to know you personally. Book that call now, even if you're not ready to get started on this journey. It's all about fixing your health now and setting you up for success long term. If you guys enjoyed this video and wanna get a deeper dive into the 10 most common mistakes that I see people make on their GLP-1 journey, check out that video right there and I'll see you guys later in the next one.